everyone, this is Manny Wan. For March, I'm reading a couple of my most anticipated titles of the year, and just a really interesting title in general. So the most anticipated titles that I have are The Winner's Kiss, the third and final book of The Winner's Trilogy by Marie Murtkowski, and Blood Passage, the second book of the Dark Caravan Cycle Trilogy by Heather Demetrios. And that's all I'm going to say about them because of spoilers. The last book that I want to talk about is by Alan Kuman, who is a Canadian author. Yay! And it's called Hot Pterodactyl Boyfriend. Um, this sounds pretty self-explanatory and awesome, but if you do want a little more information, so Vista View High School is getting its first interspecies transfer student in the form of said hot pterodactyl. This sounds crazy amazing or potentially disastrous, uh, but I can't wait to read it either way. Hey everyone, happy March! So it's no surprise to anyone that I am a huge fan of the fantasy genre, and two of the books I'd like to talk about this month are, in fact, fantasy. The first book I want to chat about today is Siren Song by Mary Weber. Uh, this is the third and final installment of the Storm Siren trilogy, which are about mostly about Nim, uh, an elemental who can summon storms, and her um, quest to right wrongs and um, find herself and freedom for herself, uh, with a little love thrown in here and there. Um, I really enjoy the world building that Mary has done in the first two books in this series, and the characters are fantastic. So I'm both looking forward to reading this one and sad to see the stories come to an end. Uh, the second book I want to chat about today is Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. Uh, Alwyn's actually a member of our London book club, um, and we've heard about this book coming for a little while uh, now. I'm really excited to read it, and let me read the back so you see why. Amani Alhiza is many things. A sharpshooter, a dreamer, a damn good liar. She's never been an outlaw, a thief, or a spy, and she's never met anyone worth risking death, death for, but that's all about to change. The final book I want to chat about today is The Serpent King by Jeff Zentner. Uh, this, is, this one is not a fantasy. Um, it's actually a contemporary novel about a young man who lives uh, in the Bible Belt and who is happens to be the son of a Pentecostal minister who for some reason asks or urges his son to handle poisonous rattlesnakes. So I'm not entirely sure why, uh, but the rest of the book seems pretty interesting. I think it'll be um, one of those finding your place in the world um, outside of what your parents expect from you or outside of what your parents are pushing you toward. I'm um, looking forward to it. Hey y'all, Sarah here. I'm ready to march forward, get it, with two books this month. First up, we've got Map of Fates by Maggie Hall. This is the sequel to The Conspiracy of Us, which I just reviewed. I'm about halfway through this sequel, and I am loving it so far. Uh, if you thought that our heroine got to experience a lot of international locales and like exotic adventures in the first book, well, this sequel double, maybe even triples that. Uh, it's super fun and I'm already sensing an increase in sparks uh, between Stellan, who was my personal favorite in book one, uh, and our main heroine. And I can't wait to find out what happens in the second half. Next up is The Great Hunt by Wendy Higgins. This is a retelling of the Grimm's Brothers' The Singing Bone, which I'm not familiar with, but I do like the Grimm's Brothers. And this uh, synopsis on the back got me super intrigued. I'll read you guys a little bit of it. When a strange beast terrorizes the kingdom of Lachlanach, fear stirs revolt. In an act of desperation, a proclamation is sent to all five lands of Yorona. Kill the creature and win the ultimate prize, the hand in marriage of King Loxon's daughter. Princess er er Ereti, Ereti? I'm gonna have to work on these fantasy names. Princess Ereti knows her duty to the kingdom, but cannot bear the idea of marrying a stranger until a brooding local hunter, Paxton Seabolt, what a name, catches her attention. And while there's no denying the spark between them, Arity feels that Paxton's mysteriousness is foreboding, maybe even dangerous. Wow, a lot of names in that, uh, but I'm still looking forward to reading it and finding out more about this Paxton Seabolt character. Cheers, y'all. Hey guys, I have some awesome March books for you. 
First off, picked it up just because of the title, Save Me Kurt Cobain by Jenny Manzer. So what if Kurt Cobain is still alive and he could be your father? That's what our girl Nico is wondering when she finds her missing mother stash of Nirvana memorabilia. Now, Nico's already obsessed with Nirvana because her mother was, and because Nirvana is a really good band, let's just put that out there. And she's determined to figure out why her mother disappeared without a trace. Now, while she's looking for clues, she finds something that leads her to believe that Kurt Cobain is still alive and could hold the keys to the entire mystery. So, is he still alive? Maybe you'll have to read the book and decide for yourself. Boy, don't we wish. Second, got some historical fiction by Cat Winters. It is The Steep and Thorny Way, and it's 1923 in rural Oregon, and Hannah Lee's father was killed about a year and a half ago. Now, his killer just got out of jail after serving 18 months, but he swears up and down, still, that he's innocent. Meanwhile, the townspeople are swearing that her father is still haunting the roads and on the loose like a restless spirit, or he is a restless spirit. So, could his real killer really still be on the loose? That's what Hannah Lee has to find out. And finally, I am so excited about this book. It is A Tyranny of Petticoats. Bells, Bank Robbers, and Other Badass Girls by Jessica Spotswood. We've got some FYA faves in this anthology, like Elizabeth Ween, Marissa Meyer, Marie Lou, and Leslie Walton. But more importantly, it's historical American fiction about some seriously diverse and badass ladies. We've got settings everywhere from Alaska to Chicago to DC. There are ghosts, there's magic, some ladies cross-dress, but most importantly, all of these stories are really good. So I absolutely love this book. I think you will too. You must put it on your to-do list. Besides, the name alone is awesome. And that's it for this month.